Time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. When your sister calls you greedy for asking for rent, changing the locks feels less like eviction and more like a necessary renovation. Today in the R Lounge, here's to upgrading your locks and your life. Sister called me greedy for charging her rent. I changed the locks and made her homeless. I, 27 female, let my sister, Jen, 34 female, live with me when she was going through a bitter divorce and now it's been seven months since she's been living with me. Jen was married to a rich man for almost a decade after which he cheated on her and she dumped him. She stormed out of his house impulsively in anger but didn't know where to go. She was a stay-at-home wife. Her husband was quite well off. They had no children and she had a lavish lifestyle. She was accustomed to an easy life and when suddenly she was thrust into a harsh reality she didn't know what to do. The friends she had were mostly the wives of her husband's friends, so she couldn't seek shelter at their place. She was supposed to get an alimony, but the divorce proceedings were still on, so she needed my roof until then. Our parents live in the countryside, far away from the city, and Jen didn't want to go there. So she turned to me, hoping I would be her savior. Despite living in the same city for so many years, Jen never visited me. She was so busy in her happy-go-merry life that she never bothered to check on me, apart from the occasional texts and calls. I too never needed her help. I was rolling things on my own. Jen and I shared a decent bond growing up. We have seven years of age gap, so by the time I gained some sense, she was a teenager, living her life, and soon she moved out to live in the city with her boyfriend. She was pursuing her career in modeling back then. She had a couple of more relationships before she met her ex-husband and got married. She didn't get a big break, just a few gigs here and there. She left her modeling career after she engaged with her ex-husband. I live in a tiny one-bedroom apartment, barely making ends meet. I had a modest job that just covered my rent and utilities. I wasn't thrilled about the idea of having a roommate, let alone my sister, who had a reputation for being high maintenance and irresponsible. I told her I don't have a fancy place like her four-bedroom house, but she assured me she would crash on the couch while I could have my bedroom. She said she was at the lowest point of her life and all she needs is the basics, a roof above her head. I was still reluctant, but she convinced me saying the betrayal had made her resilient and now she would like to take charge of her life and get a job. I hesitantly agreed to let her stay with me until she could get back on her feet. It's been seven months since then and she's still struggling to get back on her own. Looking back, I realized I was naive to think it would be a temporary arrangement. Jen moved in with all her baggage, emotional, financial, and literally my life was never the same again. The first few weeks were rough. She cried day and night. She often locked herself in the bedroom, crying and yelling at her ex-husband over the phone. I tried to be understanding and gave her the space. I thought she needed privacy for confrontation. She was going through a tough time. There were so many nights I spent on the couch and let her have my bed. Her divorce was ongoing, so she had to show up for lawyer meetings or appear in front of a magistrate. It was frequent for the first two or three months, and after that, she hardly went outside. She spent most of her days lounging around the apartment, watching TV and scrolling through her phone. She wasn't doing much in the way of job hunting, but she assured me that she was just taking a break and would soon start looking for work. Weeks turned into months, and my patience began to wear thin. Jen had been living with me for over seven months, and not once did she contribute to the rent or utilities. At first, I didn't mind covering the expenses, thinking she just needed time to accept the reality. Coming out of a decade-long marriage is not easy. I was compassionate towards her because her life had turned upside down in a blink. But then, last week, I lost my job. It was a punch in my gut. The company I worked for went bankrupt. I came home and broke down in front of Jen. That job meant everything to me. I cried telling her how would I manage the expenses. I thought my unemployment would spur her into action, but I guess she has taken it for granted. Though she told me not to worry and that she would find a job and pitch in, I highly doubt she meant any of her words. I don't see her moving her butt to find work. Now my concern is that I don't think I'll be able to cover rent and bills with unemployment benefits and the stress of keeping a roof over our heads is becoming unbearable. I told Jen to step up, but every time I broached the subject of rent, she would deflect. I'm looking for a job, or I'll start paying you back once I get my alimony. But nothing ever materialized. No job, no effort, no rent. Whenever I get angry over this, she starts sobbing about her miserable life. She tells me once her divorce is settled, she will pay me back every penny I've spent on her. I'm not clinging to her words because I know she has her own crap to put together. I don't want her money either. I just want to get rid of her. I'm afraid to let go of my savings to support her. 
The likelihood of finding a new job with similar pay in the current market is daunting. To be honest, I have started to resent Jen's presence in my home. She seemed completely oblivious to my struggles. Yes, she does help me with household chores, but it's not enough. I want her to fend for herself, but I also cannot throw her away knowing she has nowhere else to go. Oh lord, how do I get rid of her? You opened your home to your sister during her time of need, but now it's become a burden that's affecting your own well-being, especially after losing your job. It's completely understandable that you're feeling resentful, having someone live with you for seven months without contributing, especially when you're struggling financially. It's incredibly stressful. Set a clear timeline for her to start contributing or find alternative living arrangements, and let her know that it's not about abandoning her, but about taking care of yourself too. Update 1 Thanks for the comments. Sorry for the late update. Kinda busy juggling two jobs. So yeah, I got two part-time jobs and I'm clinging on to it. The situation with my sister got worse. When I was jobless for a couple of weeks, I saw her putting effort into finding one for herself. She got a receptionist job. She did it for a month, and when I got two part-time jobs, she quit hers. She thought I could take care of us. As earlier, because my payout from both jobs combined is equivalent to my last full-time job. But I have to slog my butt for 12 hours a day. I asked what happened to her job. She said she took leaves to attend the court cases, and hence she was fired. I told her up front that she needed to find a job or find any other means to pay the rent and utilities. She didn't take it well, but she found another job and said she would pay for her bills. She started bringing her own food and didn't touch mine, but no contribution towards the utilities and rent. When I asked, she said her payout is very low and she's exhausting most of it in food and other expenses. She said she's hunting for a better paying job and then she would pay the rent. I frowned and she said she would pay the outstanding bills for all the months together once she gets a better job or the alimony. I want her to move out, but she's not able to pay the minimum rent to me. How on earth would she be able to rent her own place? Two more months went by and nothing changed. Jen was still not able to pay the rent, still lounging around my apartment and still not paying a cent towards the utilities. To her defense, she would say, what extra you have to pay for me? I bring my own food. You still have to pay the rent and utilities even if I'm not here. Then how the hell am I piling up on you? In fact, I'm at your help. I lend a hand at the household chores. You never appreciate me for that. I usually don't indulge in any conversation with her, but I had reached my breaking point, and I shot back, let me give you some reality check in case you didn't understand your stuff. Your nonstop 12 hours of watching TV and keeping the lights switched on adds to the electricity bill significantly. Also, if you were not here, I would have gotten a roommate who would have actually paid me in real currency and not the false promise. She stared at me with wide eyes and said, who would agree to live in this dingy apartment and that too on the living room couch? I was stunned at her words. My apartment was not the best in the town, but it's definitely not dingy and even if it is, it's the same place that gave her shelter when she had nowhere else to go. She quickly took back her words and said, my bad, I haven't lived in this kind of arrangement so it's hard for me to believe that people rent out their living room as well. Don't worry. I'll pay you all the bills once my divorce is settled. I'm making a note of all the money I owe you until now. I wanted to ask her how much does she owe me as per the calculation, but I didn't want to mess my head talking to her. After the discussion, the tension between us became thick. Every conversation we had seemed to end in an argument. I'll be honest, it was mostly I who got annoyed with her and fought because she was not ready to take the responsibility. She was softer on me, but what other option does she have? To make matters worse, I found out that she was bringing boys over when I wasn't around. One day I came home early to find strange men lounging on my couch. On seeing me, she swiftly went outside with him. When she came back, I asked her about him and she said he was her friend from work who came to drop her and she invited him upstairs for coffee. A week later, I found a random guy coming out of my bathroom. I felt like a violation of my space. It was evident that she was bringing men into my apartment in my absence. I confronted her about it, but she brushed it off saying she needed distractions to cope with the stress of the divorce. I said you can have all the distractions you want, but not at my apartment. God knows what kind of infections these men brought with them. I wanted to be compassionate, but it was hard to feel sympathy for someone who was taking advantage of my generosity. I knew that if I didn't take drastic action soon, else I would end up in serious financial trouble. That's when I knew I had to be firm. I sat Jen down and told her that my finances are tight and I would need a roommate. So if she really wanted to stay with me, she needed to start paying rent or she would have to leave. I wasn't asking for much, just enough to cover her share of the rent and utilities. But Jen wasn't having it. She thought by bringing her own food, 
she was done with her part. She called me greedy and selfish, accusing me of only caring about money and not about family. She said I was being cruel to her in her time of need and that I was a terrible sister. I was flabbergasted. After everything I had done for her, how could she turn around and call me greedy? She knew my situation that I had lost my job, slogging my butt for 12 hours to make ends meet, yet she acted this way. I also shot back at her and called her a freeloader. She stormed out of the house in anger. Then she did the worst. Instead of reflecting on her behavior, she badmouthed me to our parents, who lived in a different town and had no idea what I was going through. The next day, I received a call from my mom. She was upset, saying that Jen had told her I was trying to kick her out of the street. She said, How could you be so heartless, especially when Jen was going through such a tough time? I tried to explain my side of the story, but it was clear that my parents had already made up their minds. They sided with Jen, telling me that I needed to support her, no matter what. I asked them if they would be willing to help out by sending money to cover Jen's share of the rent. There was a long silence on the other end of the line before my dad finally spoke up, saying, this is one of the rare moments where I get to step up as a responsible person and help my sister. I got furious at his demand. It was easy for them to say when they weren't the ones footing the bill. I felt betrayed by my own family, who seemed to care more about Jen's comfort than my well-being. I was getting miserable working for 72 hours a week and getting paid at the rate of 40 hours a week. I wanted to quit one job and focus on finding full-time work and good pay, but I can't quit in this situation. I need both these jobs to make ends meet. It has become mentally and physically taunting for me. After that phone call, I knew what I had to do. I couldn't keep sacrificing my own stability for Jen's sake, especially when she wasn't making any effort to improve her situation. I gave her one final ultimatum. Either she starts paying rent and utilities, or she has to leave. I told her she has two weeks to pay or make other living arrangements. Jen was raging with anger. She accused me of being heartless and greedy, but I stood my ground. I couldn't afford to let her stay any longer without contributing. The final straw came when she threw a tantrum, telling me she didn't need my charity and that she would find a place to live on her own. I said, cool, we'll see. Two weeks passed and Jen still didn't pay the rent or make any plans to move out. So I did the only thing I could. I packed up her stuff, left it by the door and changed the locks while she was out fooling around. When she came home that night and found herself locked out, she called me in a panic, begging me to let her in. But I had made up my mind. I told her she needed to find somewhere else to stay and hung up the phone. I saw her from my window leaving the apartment in despair. I feel bad for her, but what else could I do? My parents also called me, but I ignored them. I was done supporting Jen. If she herself doesn't want to improve her life, there's nothing I could do. Don't feel guilty, OP. You've given her more than enough chances, and at the end of the day, you did what was necessary to protect yourself. It's clear that your family doesn't fully understand your side of things, but you can't let their opinions derail your progress. You've done what you needed to do, and now you can focus on getting your life back in order. Update 2 The next few days were tough. Jen called me multiple times, leaving voicemails filled with apologies and pleas for me to let her back in. She tried to manipulate me, saying that she was going through a tough time and that I was being cruel by abandoning her when she needed me the most. She even tried to guilt trip me by saying our parents were disappointed in me for turning my back on family, but I didn't budge. My parents also tried all means to convince me to have her back, but I didn't lose my ground. Finally, they offered to pay Jen's share of the rent, but by then, I had put up my living room for rent, and I found a roommate who was willing to move in immediately, and I couldn't afford to lose that opportunity. I knew if I let Jen back in, I would be right back where I started, struggling to make ends meet and dealing with her and my parents' constant excuses. My parents didn't see my point about why I didn't want to live with Jen again. They even threatened to cut me off if I didn't let Jen in. I said, oh, do it by all means. I'm not going to have her back at any cost. They went no contact with me. I couldn't care less about it. Later, I heard from mutual friends that she was couch surfing with acquaintances, trying to find a more permanent living situation. I felt a twinge of guilt knowing that she was homeless, but I also felt relieved. For the first time in months, I had my space back, and I felt good that I no longer had to deal with the constant stress of supporting someone who didn't appreciate it. I left one of the part-time jobs and hunted for better work, and within a month, I got one. However, recently my mom called me out of the blue and apologized to me for pushing too hard on me to help Jen. I asked her what made them have a change of heart. Then, I learned the full story behind Jen's divorce. It was not her husband who was cheating on her, it was actually she who was fooling around with other men. Her husband had caught her cheating with his colleague, and when he confronted her about it, she showed no remorse. I have always known her husband to be a kind gentleman, providing her with a comfortable lifestyle. She didn't want to work, and he was okay to provide for her, but after discovering her infidelity, he had enough. He filed for divorce and made sure that she would walk away with nothing. No alimony, 
no financial support, nothing. He wanted to teach her a lesson, and it seemed that life was doing the same. I asked mom how she got to know all of this. She said Jen's husband revealed the truth. Initially, my parents were reluctant to believe it, but then he sent the evidence, which was hard to deny. I asked why all of a sudden, after so many months, her husband came forward to expose her. Mom said, let me quote her. After you threw out Jen from your apartment, she would call us nagging about her miserable life. She wanted us to sell our farm and give her the money to lease a condo and start a business. You know how your dad is. <laughs> he refused to sell off his farm and asked her to get the alimony from her husband. He cheated on her, so he should pay the compensation. But she said her lawyer was a weak guy and couldn't get her the alimony. Your dad got furious and asked her to send the case file and that he would get it reviewed by another lawyer. She said she had no documents as her husband ripped her off everything. It seemed unbelievable, but your dad called her husband to bash him. Instead, we got a shocker. He revealed all the truth about Jen. He sent all the screenshots of the chats recovered from Jen's phone, and it was outrageous. Your dad and I apologized to him. Since then, dad has cut contact with her and told her never to visit home. I know the obvious question here would be, how come my family and I do not know the real reason for her divorce? Actually, Jen and her husband barely kept in touch with us. He has never visited my parents. Jen never introduced him to us. Even the wedding invite was just a formality. My parents attended it as a guest, but I didn't show up. I had something else to attend at that time. Jen visited my parents only three to four times in the 10 years of her marriage, and as per her earlier accounts, her husband was a kind and generous man who provided her with a good life and let her live the way she wanted. So, finally, Jen's truth came out and my parents got to see her true colors. When I found out the details, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. Jen had always been reckless and selfish, and now she was finally facing the consequences of her actions. She had screwed up big time. Her husband had every right to tear her apart, and I realized that by kicking her out of my apartment, I had done the right thing too. It wasn't easy to stand up to her, especially when our parents were pressuring me to take care of her, but I knew that I couldn't let her drag me down with her. I had to prioritize my own well-being, even if it meant being labeled as a bad sister. You made the tough but necessary choice to protect your own mental health and financial stability. You weren't abandoning Jen. You were setting boundaries and refusing to enable her destructive behavior any longer. In the end, it's clear that prioritizing your own well-being was the right decision. Now that you're free from that constant stress, you can focus on building a better future for yourself. You're not the bad sister at all, OP. You're the one who finally had the courage to break free from the chaos and stand up for yourself. What do you think? Thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you soon. And put your chair back where you found it.